now I'm going to create my first web API so I'll just go to file new project and I'm going to select ASP.NET empty ASP.NET web application and I'll name it as my first web API I'm going to do everything from scratch I'm going to start an empty web API project and I'll say okay if you are familiar with MVC and it is good to have basic understanding of MVC before proceeding for ASP.NET web APIs if you do not have even then no worries it is very simple this directory structure is same as your MVC project directory structure you have controllers and models now I'm going to add a new controller I'll just right click and say add controller and I'm going to add ASP.NET web API to controller which is empty now what is web API and what is web API 2 it is the latest version and you need not to worry much about the versionings of web API because you are a newbie to web api so for a newbie there is no much difference in various versionings of web api so as of now let us go with asp.net that is our web api 2 controller mt and i'll name it as mtt controller manjur the trainer i'll add now if you observe your controller your web api controller is a class which inherits from a predefined class that is api controller so your web api controller is nothing but it is a class in simple term which inherits from api controller which is a predefined class now i need to define a method say i'll say public string it is going to return string and i'll name it as get as we know that it follows certain convention so for get method your method name should be get and it is going to return manjur the trainer now how do i access this i access this say i have some base address then i'll say slash api then slash the controller name i need not to use controller i need to use just controller name that is mtt that's it because by default my method from the browser is get if I just type in this it is going to invoke this method now let me execute this so this is my base address I'll say slash API slash MTT you see that it returns Manzoor the trainer now I'll say F12. Now if you see that your request in its header you see the request method is get and status code is 200 which means okay whatever you are expecting it has returned it. Now what if I want to return array so I need to simply and here I'll say return new array of string save this now let me execute it again I'll call API slash MTT now if you see that it is returning me an array of strings this Now I'll just try to enhance a little here I'm going to declare a variable private variable array of string s equals to this. And here I'll say return s. Now again let me execute. It should give me the same result. Now I'm going to define another get method. 
and this time I am expecting int id and I am going to return a single string of that index. Now let me execute and see what it says. If I say slash api mtt it should return me both the things and if I say slash zero it returns Manzoor the trainer and if I say one it returns ASP. If you put a breakpoint it understands very well what method is being called. If it is MTT it is going to jump to the get method. If it is slash an ID then it is going to jump get method with parameter id1 and it is going to return asp is invoked with this uri and this method is invoked with parameter id so that's it we are ready with a simple asp.net web api service now in our next video we will try to host it and use it in windows and web app that's it for this video. Thank you very much.